Hey all, here at OS Reviews, you're watching our retro throwback of the Chromebook Pixel Original Generation 1 here in 2019. So it's hard to believe that this thing is almost six years old, released in February of 2013. Again, time really does fly. It was the first premium Chromebook showing Google's ambitions for what at the time was kind of a limited operating system without support for any native Android applications. It sold for a hefty $1,000, which many thought was extremely overpriced for what it was, a fancy web browser, but it came with also cutting edge hardware and a stunning design. So now, six years later, you can find the Chromebook Pixel for around $200 on a good day if you look on Amazon or eBay uh, for a like new condition unit. And for that price, it's actually very similar now to many newer Chromebooks coming onto the market, uh, also around 200 bucks. In terms of specifications, though, the Chromebook Pixel still has advantages over new 2018-2019 models, including a touchscreen display that has a 2K resolution, so extremely sharp, in addition to a super premium construction made out of aluminum unibody, uh, very similar to an Apple uh, MacBook, in fact, in addition to a glass trackpad and an Intel Core i5 processor. It comes with 4 gigs of built-in RAM, at least this base model does, which is still very similar to the newer Chromebooks uh, coming out, and it comes with 32 gigs of built-in SSD. The display has a 3 by 2 aspect ratio, which uh, Google claims is better for reading web pages, but for watching videos, you do have more bars because it's not quite as stretched as on the newer uh, devices and phones, which have a wider aspect ratio. So let's take a closer look at the design first, we have again aluminum unibody slab, which is extremely sleek. On my unit here, I actually have a skin that is wrapped on top just to protect it, which gives it a wood grain texture, but otherwise it's made entirely out of aluminum. This particular model is also the LTE version, so it has a SIM card slot that you can pop in a 4G SIM card uh, that you can use to access the internet when Wi-Fi isn't available. Anyways, there's a status bar on the top that will glow when the machine is turned on and also when it's charging. Anyways, on the edge here, we have just the hinge where we can see kind of the Chrome logo if you look very closely. Again, very boxy shape. And then on the edge here, we also have the I.O., including a proprietary charger on the first generation Chromebook Pixel that we have here. On the second gen, they actually moved over to USB Type-C, so that's a more modern standard, which they've kept for the Pixel books. You also find video output uh, that supports 4K resolution and also two USB 2.0 ports along with a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack. The bottom here features that uh, lip, which again is very much inspired by Apple, making it easier to lift up the entire lid of the computer using just one finger. And on the other side, we don't have anything at all aside from an SD card reader and the SIM card slot. Now the LT versions do have an antenna band that actually runs across the side as well as on the front. Although it feels absolutely premium, one downside of going with all metal is it's a very heavy computer, surprisingly considering its relatively thin size and you'll find some very basic specs printed on the aluminum here as well. Now, this is a self-contained computer, so the battery and uh, RAM, all the components are inside. So if you want to do any upgrading, in my case, I wanted to swap out the battery because the old one was starting to get a little bit short. You have to remove the rubber feet to access four screws, after which point you're able to just remove the back cover like so. Um, again, just made out of metal, and inside we have the computer's components, including the battery here, so you can find replacement cells online as well, and that's essentially how you replace this component. Other uh, elements of the hardware though are basically soldered on. You can see the Core i5 processor and the RAM is non-upgradable unfortunately. We are greeted to a very large trackpad which is made out of glass just like on premium MacBooks so it feels extremely sensitive. It's definitely one of the better trackpads you'll find on a laptop even to this day. Supporting multi-touch gestures just fine. It's a single piece that clicks down and it just feels a lot more precise than using a plastic or a rubber trackpad which wears down over time. This thing can withstand wear and tear much better because it's coated in a layer of glass. We also have an island style keyboard which has a, you know, a chiclet layout and the keys themselves are super responsive and tactile, great feedback and travel because again, it's not the slimmest computer in the world so they were able to put in uh, a more traditional key switch so it feels great. It's also a backlit keyboard, again, a feature of more expensive and premium laptops so you can even type in the dark. Not many Chromebooks have this functionality. There's also a bar on the very top that actually reminds me a lot of the design of kind of the 2016 uh, MacBooks uh, with a touch strip, but this is of course not touch sensitive, but rather buttons that are placed very close together, kind of looks like a bar. And we have just this gorgeous 
touchscreen display, again at 2K resolution, with a webcam on the top at HD resolution, and fairly slim bezels for something from six years ago. Taking a closer look at the UI and performance next, it runs very smoothly, which isn't surprising because Chrome OS has the stereotype of running well even on low-end hardware. So on flagship level specs like a Core i5 processor, it still is buttery smooth and just flies along, really, even in 2019. Um, otherwise, uh, you know, Chrome OS has continued support from Google, and that includes new features such as supporting Linux apps uh, soon. You can also start to dual boot into Windows 10 by default. So there's a lot of new developments being made. And again, this being a very powerful top-of-the-line Chromebook does mean you get the advantage of still performing well with these newer and newer features. Anyways, here's the latest UI. We can tap on the notification bar to bring up things like our profile. We can turn on Wi-Fi. We can access a nightlight mode that just turns off the blue light filter to make it easier to read. You can also cast your screen onto a Chromecast or a Miracast device, toggle on Bluetooth, so all these properties can be adjusted. Um, otherwise, we have a bar on the very bottom of our commonly used applications. I can also tap to bring up, let's say, a full list of applications on my device, so I can you know, bring this up further. And again, it's pretty reminiscent of a tablet uh, these days, which is great because the Chromebook Pixel has a touch screen. So you can just use that instead of a trackpad and mouse. And that still works really nicely for navigating. So let's try loading up, let's say, a more demanding page and see how it fares. Uh, for instance, if we want to load up the New York Times, it's a good benchmark because it has, uh, again, many text, ads, and video elements, which are difficult for lower power devices to render. But you can see here, it's actually doing a pretty good job. If we just take a look at a Wi-Fi, again, we are a little bit far from our router. Overall, Wi-Fi reception seems quite good uh, because of the antennas integrated onto the outer shell. Uh, with that being said, it's maybe not quite as strong as on some plastic Chromebooks where the antenna can pass through even more easily. But all in all, I didn't have really too many problems here. Um, I still have about three hours of battery life, as you can see and uh, loading up the New York Times, the full page is loading along pretty well. Scrolling is still buttery smooth and responsive, no real problems at all. Let's try going over to YouTube and play back a sample track. I can uh, view back videos up to 2K resolution, and it still is very fast and responsive. And use HTC Sense as the UI on top of the device, which is very similar to their Android phones. So muting the sound here, the speaker quality is also outstanding. Chromebooks in general, like I mentioned previously, have you know always never disappointed me when it comes to giving excellent audio performance. Uh, but the Chromebook Pixel is even better, just because the the sound is just super crisp. It doesn't distort at higher volumes. It is definitely one of the better speakers I've encountered from a laptop. Period. You can access Gmail. You can access uh, you know anything you want to do. You can even access kind of remote desktop from a Windows computer if you want to do some more productivity. So again, performance as always is still buttery smooth and uh, flies. Um, the i5 here does have a running fan. So after about uh, 15 minutes of use, especially if you're streaming a 2K video, it does start to uh, pop onto life. So you hear a little bit of that in the background, but it's not overly noisy, just something to keep in mind. It's not completely silent like some newer ultra books on the market. Uh, one thing I will say though, is that this Chromebook does run quite warm because of the fan on the i5. It's not super energy efficient. If you are using on your lap, it does get quite toasty. Again, especially if you are watching a 2K YouTube video in addition to you know browsing some other tabs, it does get uh, noticeably warm. And here's a demo of what the backlit keyboard looks like. It's again very evenly done and as a result it just makes uh, viewing back and typing in the dark a lot easier. Again, the keys are excellent, so for things like essays, Word documents, it really is an excellent productivity machine to use. Uh, something that hasn't really changed. So again, I find that it's uh, using it both for entertainment and for productivity. It still is just extremely premium feeling and just works very well. And here's just a quick demo of the LED status bar. It glows with Google's colors and gives you different notifications discreetly. Just a very nice little extra touch. Uh, you can also double tap on it to have a quick glance at the battery. So that's been our revisited look at the original Chromebook Pixel uh, here six years later. It's a 
outstanding piece of hardware, very premium to look at, and performance actually still is very good uh, in terms of processing power. The Core i5 still holds up really well. In fact, it's more powerful to this day than many of the other cheaper Chromebooks that you'll find now at the same price. It has better usability thanks to the fact that it has a great glass trackpad, an excellent backlit keyboard, and a touchscreen that is super high resolution, making video watching and web browsing a breeze. The only downside is battery life is not great. Even back in its day, like we said, it was on the shorter side. All these years later, it uh, is pretty weak, especially since Chromebooks have the stereotype of having better than average battery life, around 12 hours or so, since it's basically just a web browser. But on this, the Core i5 being very power consuming, definitely dwindle that down to only about three hours or so, which was a pretty big difference with other models. Furthermore, this version does not support uh, Android applications out of the box. You can tweak it to make it work, but it requires some work on the user's part. So it's no longer able to run the latest version of um, all the Chrome OS features, just because it is starting to get a little bit out of date there. So overall, I would say that for the price, it's still definitely worthwhile if you want a premium experience and a fast web browsing machine at a price now that's very similar to other Chromebooks. So if you're considering a Chromebook anyways, you might as well try one of these if battery life is not your number one concern. So you can check out more details in the links down below, but for now, that's been our video. Thanks for watching here at OS Reviews.